this is uh this is weird it's not weird I just gotta document it I'm out here in a parking lot it's not too late I don't think I haven't been out here in a while I kind of stayed away um hopefully the sound isn't messed up it shouldn't be too bad let me try and maybe I'll start at the top. Is the clips today? I stayed focused and uh, you know did a personal thing. And, and by the way, I don't know if y'all felt anything strange. That looks weird. Um, but as soon as the eclipse hours came through, I felt a very strange effect something that's kind of difficult to describe like something internal there's an internal pressure an internal magnetism I should get away from cars and um so uh i didn't want to do anything you know fasting basic stuff i didn't want to go out and of course i wait until later and then it rains and so i'm like skipping around between go going out and avoiding the rain and I go out and I'm like I don't want to spend any money or do anything or buy anything you know get any food and, and eat anything because I'm kind of doing that a lot I don't know if you can tell I've gained a little bit of weight which is pretty much nothing but it's a big deal if, for me at least and um so uh, then I was like I'll go to a store and possibly get a, the uh, lightweight shorts that I can wash if I do attempt to ride a long distance because wearing you know regular shorts or something like that isn't the best idea because you can't wash them and dry them with these these um, lightweight basically plastic polyester shorts you can wash and wear in two minutes thing about that is I also neglected to do anything to buy any more because I had some previously uh, th that I bought and I'm holding on to because uh, it's best to have cotton and even in uh, some of the ancient texts they say don't have don't wear clothes don't wear garments that are made of more than one material like the cotton and polyester and so on or is that a reference to the garment of the soul and uh, polluted DNA, and so on. Tree of life, and, and so on and so forth. But, um, so then I go out, and, uh, I didn't get anything. I was walking around the store, and, uh, I'm trying not to make this. Just put it on two times speed if I'm slow. It's actually not going to work, because I'll speak fast, but then there's, like, large pauses in between everything, but regardless. Um... And, uh, I, uh, I'm going out again down the road, and then I see the, uh, I thought, was the, what I see, I see what I thought was the storm coming back. And so I start to race home real quick. And, uh, definitely didn't come, but, uh, right over there, on the other side of the parking lot behind a the building, there's this dude, like, slumped over, messed up. And I rode by. And I was like, you good? Or something. And uh, he looked up and he like mumbled something. <laughs> it was like the second day this has happened as well. Where I was riding past somebody. And uh, I don't know. I just rode past him. He couldn't like hear me behind him. And he said something like, oh, we have a cell phone. And I was just like, what? And I kept going. Because a lot of times people are be messed up just walking around or just out. And, uh, and this dude was messed up, and I felt like he was just, you know, drunk or, or, or high or something off of, you know, like weed, nothing nothing crazy, because he was kind of half smiling and giggly. And he drank too much alcohol and smoked, so he, he was obviously, like, sick to his stomach. He wasn't getting, he wasn't uh, throwing up or anything. It wasn't like, like that. He was just, he couldn't move. And so I was like, you know, you want me to get you a water or something to eat for later? And he was also like, yo... Yeah, He's trying to get me back to a certain location, and it's funny because that location was right behind him, <laughs> and I don't know if he knew where he was, but I told him, and he was just like, uh, 
And um, so I went and got him some stuff. And uh, water, granola bars, a uh, fruit drink, um, bag of chips. I think that was, and then a can of lentils, which hopefully is BPA-free can, but all the plastic is poisonous. I didn't want to get him the new chicken noodle soup. Anyway, I'm getting out of the point because I don't eat animal products. But um, then I go out, I probably took too long because I go out and he's gone. But for some reason there was a drinks, a drink tray and drinks from Popeye's sitting where he was. So I'm guessing somebody came and picked him up and either that or he turned into a drink tray <laughs> with two drinks. But um, I thought about leaving the food there because somebody would find it eventually. But then I felt that wasn't good enough and I also I made a point to not eat or you know buy anything at least for myself basically I was fasting and so I was like great now I have to either return this or find somebody to give it to and I didn't want to return it I didn't even want to go in there I don't usually go into main stores like that I only go into a couple stores and you know make an effort to get in and out or to to not spend time in the line or something it's just it feels like the worst energy it feels like rolling in like a bag of needles or some shit excuse me i don't know what it is it's just the energy everybody knows um so i start riding around i literally am like well i could go back now but i could take it to the house and be like all right this box is for somebody when i find it i'm like all right well, i'll ride around i go to a hotel over there i'm like this isn't the city there's not going to be any bums or whatever you want to call them out and so i go back around i loop around like twice and then it was like perfect. It was a, a, a family with a little girl pushing a like one of the strollers, the mini strollers, and then the mom and the, the son. And so I ride up next to them in there. I ask them if they're going to the store, and the mom barely speaks any English, and I don't know enough Spanish to decode. And so uh, the son, which I've seen the son before, I don't know if it was, it was almost like a, a skate park or something. It's just weird. And uh, and he, I knew he can decode, and they usually, if he's a kid and he's going to school around here, he'll be able to speak both languages. So it was like, it worked out perfectly. And I was just like, you're going to the store, whatever, you need that, um, or you want that. And she was, as soon as uh, the kid said that, she was happy, and I knew it was going to work out. And uh, for both of our favors. And um, he translated a few thank yous and the reasoning behind it. And that was that, and I was so happy. And I used to do stuff like this all the time. Um, but I've been like shying away from, from people, from society, which is also has its pr purpose. And so then I leave that and I come back through the area that, I, you know, the direction they're going to, they were going to get something to eat. And I'm going back towards, you know, home, out this little, whatever you want to call this strip mall they invented here. Like, uh, 12 years ago or so. It used to be just a food store and then a gas station. Now they put a... Actually, they put the food store in and then they put a wash, a car wash attached to the gas station. Then they put a tiny strip mall attached to the food store. Liquor store, chicken store, dry cleaners, and uh, maybe something else. I can't remember. I don't think there's anything else. And, uh, of course, that, like, destroyed the area for a few years. There was just, like, drug deals. People got shot up here. It's crazy stuff. But, um, regardless, then I see a friend that I haven't talked to in a few months because uh, I felt they were holding me back in a few different ways. And it's weird. And we've worked together before. And, uh, and we just randomly see him. And this usually happens, but he uh, he talks to me and we talk about stuff. And at the end, he apologizes, which is just interesting because I didn't have any bad energy, but I knew that he did for the way that the situation went. And so it's like you know, the universe, karma, whatever you want to call it, was trying to. It was like it was tying up these loose ends, basically. It was making sure everything was apparent about how things had gone and what had to be. And as well, he uh, he's working a new job. And it was interesting because I was telling him, I always was telling him, I tell everybody certain things, you know, that your comfort zone is what's going to hold you back. If you stay in your comfort zone, you're never going to get to the point where you learn what you need to learn to propel yourself into new experiences. 
and he was saying that with the old job, everything he was doing was the same thing, and it was basically like tearing him up inside because he wasn't getting anywhere new, and he couldn't, he didn't have time for other things because he couldn't, you know, leave town or anything because he always knew he had to, it was a very strict situation, he had to be on time with certain things, and it was just intensive. And, uh, and at first it was because he liked it so much, but then he realized that that fell through or it just became a job. And it, it became something he couldn't stop because he didn't know what else to do. He basically became adapted, specialized, accustomed to doing that, which is something that he did not want to do anyway. And, but, it, but then you know, he had a beer in his hand. And I was telling him, the more you mediate or remedy the tension that's built up from not having what you want with uh, with a relief or comfort objects, basically like uh, food, chemicals, whatever, you know, alcohol, the more you do that, you relieve that, that tension, that pressure through some, some object of like that, the less that's gonna empower you and propel you into doing what you wanna do or namely just learning something new to get yourself into a new position to have new experiences. And that's the basis for our talks for as long as I can remember. And it was, it was just interesting because he, you know, it was, it was like it finally hit him. And it was, he always gave uh, hints about it hitting him or him, him understanding. But you could see, I could see in his eyes that he was like, you know, he, he became aware of the human condition. That if you don't change that, that's it. That's your life. It kills you. That becomes the story of your life, and then the story of your life becomes what was, what has been. And he knew that. He knew that, but he's seeing it now. He knows that that's potentially going to happen. So it's interesting. Stretch that on for 12 minutes, but the rest of it is even weirder. Which, that wasn't weird at all. You know, stuff that happens all the time if you go out. Um... So while he was sitting there talking, an old man came up and was acting funny shadow boxing and things like that. And he was listening to what I was talking about, that if you, you don't, you know, you stay in your comfort zone, that's where you basically die. Um, you stay still, that's where you stop moving. That's where you, you stop progressing. You relax. And he was saying, like, I'm 60-something years old and I, I understand what he's saying. And it's funny, he, was, he started doing Tai Chi. Like, he was probably, that guy was probably a little drunk. <laughs> But he was doing a... I mean, we were standing outside of a liquor store, basically. In between. And, uh... Not trying to loiter. He was doing Tai Chi and talking about that. Like, he's been getting into different things and learning about the energy work and... It's interesting stuff like that. I would sit on these curbs, but these are the dirtiest curbs I've ever seen in any location, including the city. They're just, like, speckled with, with dirt. I'm not even gonna move the camera. I could. Anyway, um, and he just had a playful vibe. And, and then the, the family, too, <laughs> came by and went to the, the food store, which, or not the food store, but the, uh, the restaurant, which I, th I thought was funny. That's the other place, the restaurant, two restaurants. Um, and, uh, and then another dude came up, a dude from Nigeria. And he actually bought a cigarette off of the, uh, the old guy, which I hate to use that term. Which is funny, and I haven't seen people buy cigarettes off of anyone, singles, for since they were almost legal. Um, and that's where it got interesting. He first started to talk about, because everybody else left, and then me and him were chatting. And he was talking about how he's from Nigeria, and it actually started with uh, about marijuana. I'm kind of trying to document this, because it's fresh in my mind. But uh, I guess I'll just... I, want, I was thinking, I've been watching other... Um, uh, one other uh, guy, uh, well, Austin uh, Augie, a uh, vlogger, and a uh, BMX vlogger, and the way he does his vlogs is something that I've seen that if I did the things the way that I wanted to, it would turn out to be kind of like that, just not as intensive, because that's not really what I'm looking for. But for instance, if I had the... Um, if I had the uh, the camera there, you know, 
even a camera like like he uses a DSLR. I think he he moved up to to something. Maybe not. I think it was a T3i before or something. But basically, something that could just be sitting there on the tripod that I could like rotate a little bit as different people came up. I wouldn't be having to tell you about all this right now. And this is half the stuff that happens. Half of what I'm doing here, if not eh, 60, 70 percent, is I'm relaying conversations that happened in these situations where you'd have to have clearance to, to have access to this information anyway. But the the other half is experiences, which is our, I'm just saying the ex personal experience is the same thing. It's all set up. It's all one complete system. If you had a crazy experience or a dream or something like that, it's set up. It's part of this system. It's all handled by a, a crew that manages this or multiple teams. Regardless, though, if I'm talking about something kind of like, like what I talk about in other videos and it's in public and there are other people who are, are chiming in with their own versions of how they have experienced this situation or this aspect of reality, that's what I want to bring to people in a way. It's, it's basically the same as having internet talk shows or something like that. It's as simple as a chat between friends, but when it happens the right way. For instance, the chat with, and that's the weird thing, that it's often it's a chat between strangers that makes it work. Uh, it, it's what it is. When strangers get together, they show themselves in ways that pulls information and emotion out in ways that when they're just with their friends doesn't happen. For instance, with my friend, that I've known for a while, we got like, you know, quote unquote, quite a deep, but it didn't really touch on the levels where it was being more legitimate. And that's also on behalf of my friend who's not looking at things quite the same. So then there's this Nigerian guy and he's talking about uh, how everybody's so worried because of the, the media and the way the society is, you know, weeds becoming legal, but, uh, it's just like, it's almost like a, a gang lord type situation with the way it's being handled with people who deal and people who smoke and then people who are allowed to grow and then how it, no one's allowed to sell it. Like in DC, they just legalized it within the past couple of years. And so it's legal to have, it's legal to grow, but it's not legal to sell. And it, it was legal to have before it was legal to grow. So, it's, the, it's that loophole stuff that happens where you can have it, but you can't have it. You can have it, but you can't sell it. You can have it, but you can't buy it. It's like, well, how does anybody have it in the first place? It completely is nonsensical. It's just a loophole. It's just we're working on the... That makes no sense. It's literally reversed. It's like you can have... I don't even know what to say. You can have uh, teeth before you can have a mouth. Like, how does that make sense? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But he's talking about that and kind of like the joke of society more or less and then he was tying it into real interesting information about how he's from Nigeria and they treat it as an herb as a medicine over there from the uh, the seeds making oil from the hemp seeds that are real good for your skin and your hair and how they take the plant and if you're, you're sick you have a fever they use that for the pain and to to uh, flush out illness and it's basically like they treat it as a medicine they don't treat it like a drug although it is a drug but in the same sense so is caffeine so is alcohol so is cigarettes meanwhile those two are worth if not all those three if not everything everything you can get legally Tylenol all of it way worse so much worse than marijuana could ever be period ever and it's just a fact but we live in a system that does it backwards. And so it was just interesting. And then he got into talking about how where he's from, it was it was made up of two tribes. The uh oh, I'm gonna mess up their names now. Udabro, I think, tribe, and then something with the E, Edom, Edom something comes from the Benin tribe or something. And um how there was like a uh uh, a series of changes with Margaret 
Thatch Margaret Thatcher and uh, the British Empire and how they basically combined them and it's supposed to be like for liberation and and peace and everybody knows it's bullshit it's for money and as a result of that they're constantly at war it's kind of like Israel and uh, Palestine that they they don't believe that they're connected in any way and as a result of now being put in the same spot, it's literally they're constantly at war. And then he said it in a way that I never heard before. I never knew this. That Boko Haram came as a result of that from them mimicking ISIS and using basically their political religious beliefs to, as an excuse to just murder everyone in their path. And I never knew. I knew the basics of the setup but I never knew it was that simple and he put more detail in there he put more you know emphasis and effort uh, emotion and direct experience in there but that was the gist of it which is just wild um and so the conversation went on and I'm just going to continue to talk about the conversation now but the idea behind this is that this all came from I don't know the desire to to stay within my spiritual expectations for today and in a strange way to to help others and to continue even when the first plan kind of fell through because it, and it's as well everyone that was involved was all in like the same circle the same like 100 yards literally like 60 70 yards so it's weird it's like a entire society world and the real reason beyond that or of uh, you know why that was seemingly important is because we got to talking about professions and and learning and it's like we have the same we have the same setup it's really weird and as, as well the, the the conversation got kind of deep as far as how everything is basically everything's based on change and the we know that history changes but we also know that the way history is recorded changes you know, uh, history is written by the victor. And we also know that when that actually occurs, history actually changes because then no one knows the original history at that point. So what everybody thinks and lives and feels and does becomes reality even if it's based on false premises. Meaning that the people who write history, who rewrite history, who control the media, the news, they're actually creating a reality out of nothing, or at least out of thin air. And the question is then, how far can you push it? How far can you make it up before you get so deviated from the original path that A, people won't believe it anymore, or that what society becomes is no longer the same system, the same society that history began with? And we're getting these deep, deep perspectives that it's a constant that it's always going to change and it's a constant that the people in power are always going to want to swindle others from their power at least out of their own safety or because there's corruption in high places regardless and that it's the same thing that's going on in other countries but in America it's happening right in front of your face so this is the place where you know it's happening even though in this place this is the only place where everybody says it's not happening and it's, it's specifically free. So it's a paradox. We were getting into this whole mind control scheme, population, you know, not reduction, but uh, just complete control system. But how it also negates itself because it's constant change anyway. And in the same sense, we feel we need history to teach us who we are but the same fear that keeps people separate, that keeps people divided and, and uh, basically uh, brings, brings the illusion uh, of hate, the fuel for, for illusory hate or, or differences basically, bias, cultural bias, that's also rooted in that so-called history. And so it's like it's this, the system, the universe healing itself because even then, when that history is changed so far that the original truth is wiped away, and when people wake up and realize they're being lied to, 
because no one knows the original history. Everyone's going to be forced to abandon their cultural bias, their beliefs, their social, cult, social cultural constructs, and they'll be forced to just determine who they are and how they feel about everyone around them based upon what's happening right now, right in front of them, in the present moment, in the present situation. And then nothing else will come before that, especially in times of great stress or catastrophe or whatever you want to call it. That the catastrophe could be simply because the machine, the media machines shut off or people realize it's all bullshit and have to at first feel that they're blinded, that they don't know who they are, that they, they have no history, that they have no culture, that it's all an illusion, it's all a farce. But in that sense now, that false divide between everyone is bridged, that illusory gap that fear generation system dies and the the real people are all that's left to connect with one another and so it's like it's set up for failure but that failure is set up to teach people the ultimate truth who they really are the ultimate lesson I'm telling you the conversation got so deep and uh and, and you know it's like that everywhere it's just here people are made to believe it's not specifically like that specifically here while it's happening the most openly here <laughs> so it's a paradox but it's also it's like the it's to teach people to be wise to know how to how to decipher what's really going on in the most prominent and easiest way because if you can't see that here and figure out how to decode the system you're not going to figure that out anywhere because it's the easiest here because it's the most openly illusory and therefore secretly corrupt but it's still like that everywhere so it's not like anything different is happening here which is why it's maybe even better for that very reason which is again a paradox because then they're good for being bad openly like what is that it's what it is and it goes and goes and goes and we went to, it, was, it was one of these uh, rabbit hole type conversations which I it's hard to record I need to just do like that one guy, the, the vlogger I mentioned does, and record everything. Like I'm telling you, whenever I go out and whenever I do anything, this is what happens. It ends, I mean, this isn't probably as interesting as the conversation, but I tell you, if you like these ideas, people do not think of these ideas. They don't know. They don't, and not my ideas either. I'm just, this what this guy was talking about and others. You would have definitely enjoyed this conversation. That was just like an hour or so, a couple of hours. And people would have paid into it. You know, not paid into it. They would have paid attention. Paid attention. Bad word. Um. And uh, you know, that was the gist of it. It went in from there about him, him nursing, and uh, how that's not what he wants to do. That he can figure out how to help people and and be uh, you know healing ha provide a healing aspect for people but that he doesn't want to be stuck in one spot he wants to work with his hands he wants to, to explore more or less move around and explore uh, in a business term sense and that's kind of how I am maybe give or take business you know it's still the same thing I could you could say my angle is just as much um, may not as openly though but uh that being stuck in one spot is like the disease of a heavily materialistic and a indoctrinated society and you said something that a lot of people will say and everyone in the know says that unless you start your own business unless you come up and do something with what you have to keep that going beyond just the work that you're doing with your hands on the spot, meaning you have a business, unless you do that, you're not doing anything because it's going to stop when you stop. It's going to finish, you know, it's going to stop existing when you stop existing or when you stop working, like literally that day. And everything you do is going to be working to make someone else's family fatter. That everything you do is going to be working to make someone else richer. And everything that's done is going to benefit someone else first and then you second. And that's an illusion. 
that's modern day slavery. And this is kind of why I wanted to be recording, and I thought about that before this happened, but then people are chiming in like, you know, they're like he used the term slavery, or, or, you know, a, a, a slave to another man or something, and then somebody else chimed in, just walking down the street, chimed in, this the modern day slave, blah, 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 and they, they gave a few words and then kept walking on, and this kept going on. And this happens usually if you're out, you know, doing that, especially if you're at a party or if you're out with, you know, with friends or something. But this was just like one of the pristine moments, and especially how each segment, each event connected and synchronized like it was a message because he was also then he was looking at me and he was telling me that I, I should do the same with whatever I want to do and then he was I'm not going to say what he said but he was like he was talking about what he feels I would be good at based upon how I talk and things like that and of course it's the stuff that I'm doing right now and of course it's the stuff I'm thinking about getting into and changing and, and accelerating and basically making a, a, a leap uh, of progress for and uh it's crazy because he, I'm being pushed along in so many different ways right now that it doesn't make sense unless I know what I know about the universe being one system that's all connected. It's all connected and it's all based upon wanting the truth to come out, wanting people to know, wanting knowledge to be known. Knowledge wants to be known. Progress wants to occur. Change will always happen. And that uh, the resistance to change is, you know, it's like what we, uh, or what I was saying to you and what we were talking about is that uh, people fear that change. They fear that loss of history, that loss of the identity, even if the identity is a joke, it's a farce, it's made up, they rewrote the books, it has nothing to do with anybody's real history, it changes every 30 years. They fear that because they think that's their cultural or uh, ident uh, identity death. I think that's the loss of identity, loss of culture. In reality, that new system, that new identity, that's what liberates them from the problems of the current system. That the problems can't be erased, they can't be changed until people let go of that fear of holding on to what's holding them back. And that's all people are taught to do through the media consistently pumping out fear, you know, rumors of war, selling people poisons of the mind and the body, generally bullshitting about everything that you could possibly lie about. But that's the whole point, that if they told the truth, it would be spun still, and somebody else would lie about that and pick it up. So now that you're being lied to so deeply that you'd have to be an idiot to not know you're being lied to, now you have a chance to know the truth. All you have to do is learn to decode. Learn to trust your instinct, or more so, your, your ability to discern between what you're being told and what you know and can prove based upon your own experience. And so, basically, your ability to discern. And now that you know, it, it's like, even though they're lying to you, they're giving you the opportunity to know the truth because they're openly lying to such a degree. And it's not always like that, and it's not the whole situation, the whole story. There's still corruption in high places. There's still people using hidden knowledge to warp the mind. But the point is, the depth of it is its downfall. The capacity for human change human adaptation is a constant and a surety or maybe a surety is like a financial term it's a uh, it's a premise for whatever comes next meaning there can always be suffering but there's always going to be adaptation as a result of that suffering and every country is like this. It's not just America. And there's a, a few more things we talked about that I'm either not remembering now fully or uh, don't really play into this too well. 
But uh, it's just, you know, we're having to talk about the system. And then it just happened in a very weird way. Like if I would have given up on trying to basically donate those goods, those resources to a random family, that it would have never happened. And as well, I passed up a few people smoking cigarettes outside the hotel, a few people going to the liquor store. I'm not going to give it to somebody who is just effing around with their time and their money. This is a lady with her family, her two kids, and uh, and it was healthy food and water and, you know, snacks and stuff, so that's what I was looking for. Sometimes even homeless people, they'll just trash themselves. They'll get the wrong stuff. They'll spend it on alcohol or drugs or whatever. And you know, more than sometimes. But that's not... It's annoying if you're trying to help somebody and they're not really trying to help themselves. In that case, the universe wants them to be there. The universe wants them to be hungry. Because they do. They don't want to do the work to learn. To not get out... To not use those tools, those objects of, of comfort, I can't think of the proper word for that, it was a word for it in psychological terms, like a comfort object, like a blanket or something like that, I can't think there's another word, um, but they, they refuse to stop using those, and so that tension that's built up, that pressure that's going to propel them into where they need to go, it never reaches that point where they, they actually shoot off, they actually go where they need to go, they actually catalyze into new experience, new, uh, what you call personality, and they're, so they're screwing themselves. They're hardcore effing themselves over. You know, that's a, that's a lot of all of this. Basically, that's kind of what we're talking about. That there's something called delayed gratification. You get a hot meal, whatever it is, even if you don't have any bodily injuries, you know, sitting down immediately or getting right out of bed as soon as you say, now's the time I get out of bed, not because... Oh, just a few more minutes, and and training your mind to not give in to BS and 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 being weak. If you can do that, you can do anything because your mind sees it just like uh, your mind sees TV and video games the same violence as real life. Okay, well if you're waiting to to dig into your meal or you're waiting to you're about to get out of bed, getting over that and training your mind to do that on point. It's the same as any other situation. The mind sees it the same. You're training yourself in the next situation that you never thought you could train yourself for, just by doing other things. And um, the idea is, it's as if it's as if America and this society as a whole is in one big delayed gratification training session or scenario, mind control, mind f nightmare of a of a situation, a delayed gratification. Ooh, and um, all types of like psychological testing and refinement and exploration as one big experiment, as one big, you know, almost like a ritual. And there was some about that even the guy was talking about as far as uh, how Amer- America's, I basically, I brought up that America's kind of like an experiment but that, that culture, that identity that people are so quick to defend here, they're so quick to get offended over, they're so quick to fight one another over, it doesn't exist. There's no culture here. Where did it come from? It all came from somewhere else. And if it didn't, guess what? Somebody else made it up on the spot. <laughs> and that's the culture. And that's what you have. You know, at least in other areas, it's been there for thousands of years to hundreds of years. If not oh, everywhere else, it's thousands of years. Here, it's literally not even hundreds of years. Or if it is an older culture, then it's from somewhere else. Specifically, it is not native here. And the native culture here, well, they got killed. Okay? If anything, that's what we should be thinking about. That it almost got wiped out. And so, that's the truth about about that. And then people are sitting here fighting over it. They're fighting over an illusion. But... The other aspect of that is, that's how much people want it to be real. That's how powerful the imagination and the the emotional intent, the emotionally rooted intent is. That even if it's just some made up story, 
People will fight to the death over it. It's a farce. It's a problem, but it's an, a, a show of strength. Not in the best way. It needs to be refined. It needs to be organized towards the true goal. But that's the idea that everybody's basically in a zombified state. But they're so powerful that they have to be yoked around, otherwise they'll destroy everything. Meaning if everybody worked together and, and basically accepted the change that it's an inevitability, they wouldn't be afraid, they wouldn't hurt each other, and they could actually stand up for what's going down, what's basically being done that's wrong for the people, and they could help each other at that point. And that's the whole point behind everything. That is so funny. I think that's my friend that was up here earlier. <laughs> um, and that's what they... Uh, But, um, that's what, uh, they could get, they could help each other. They could grow through that. And in that point, the problem will be solved. That people wouldn't buy into the BS. They wouldn't buy into the, the, the dogma, the indoctrination that causes people to, to move in, in ways that work against one another. It's just a paradox. The loss of identity in history is the problem, but it's also the solution because then we'll literally invent ourselves for the first time here in a way that's genuine and isn't something that somebody else invented. But in the sense that America being this type of experiment, it's going to be the most powerful thing, and it has been, and as well, it's going to be used as a kind of a catalyzing a, a, to create a reaction in the human race to create something new but that it, people are going to have to accept change. That whatever, basically their, their fears are going to be wiped out. Their fears are going to be changed. And uh, what they know is going to have to be changed. And it's going to happen one way or another. And that's basically all our fears. All the situation with the media control. It's all of it wrapped up. That is... It's change. It's socio cultural, psychological experimentation of multiple societies, multiple genetics coming together in the most, uh, the most uh, adaptive is going to result. Which is shocking if you want to hold everything the same as it's been and maybe in a lot of ways it's not the best for every situation that we have to keep original elements of genetics or or cultures maybe it degrades as time goes on like we're taught in in many places but uh truth is it's probably not going to stop that from taking place so we're still going to have those who change and those who uh those who um who remain it's always going to balance itself out basically but you can't stop it but you also can't enforce it you can't force people to wake up you can't force these changes to take place you can't you can only empower people through the knowledge of what is. And we're seeing all this play out in the political spectrum and other spectrums. The various countries making shows of, uh, of power and aggression. And it's all a show. Why does everything have to happen in such a specific way? Is it, is it a accident? No, it's a show. Everybody knows what's going on. All the different countries. 
the same way they're against each other, they're working together. It's going to be too loud. We'll see. I just wanted to document what I feel to be the more important parts of that. And as well, it kind of gives people an update and it kind of tunes, uh, lets people know other things, basically other people that have various connections to what's going on with me and this information. More information coming out. It's kind of kind of strange, but it is what it is. There's always going to be a mix. teach you to discern and read between the lines because if it teaches you to just listen and take orders and accept the truth then it hurts you and it teaches you nothing and it takes more energy from you and that's how mindlessness is born I'm telling you you're not going to like it but it's a paradox the only way to teach you is to lie to you and let you figure out the truth from there it's to give you half truth, half lies, and let you figure it out. And if you're given just the truth, you're not helped at all. It hurts you more than it helps you. It's not, it's not possible to do that. The only way is to have you come to the truth. That's it, anything less. And it's gonna get spun in a variety of different ways by all the people who claim to be telling you the truth. And in that way, it's like a ride. It's like an amusement park ride. Where you go on a, a trip, you go into a fantasy land with its own props and animatronics and subconscious reactions and alchemical cues set up to, to hit your mind in different ways. And you go through that and, and as you go through that, you come to terms with what you've always known. And you learn that you basically already knew the truth, but you just didn't know how to say it. You didn't know how to realize and react or, or more so respond and acknowledge when you see all the clues presented before you with the you know filler information in between until you pull it out like that and in that way it's pulled out of you and you bring it forth until then it doesn't hit your mind your unconscious mind and what's in the unconscious doesn't reach your conscious and you don't really know it then if you just are told and all you do is repeat it then you don't really know it that's the whole point we can't get around that it doesn't work you can never just be told and have it just be that this one time you're going to listen and you're going to use that to learn. You have to be given a set of options, an array of information, and from there you choose and you, can, you build your reality. You, you invent it. Definitely off the path now. You invent it. It's dark and the cars are blinding. You invent it on your own. And when everyone does that, who's found their own truth and they eventually invent their own connected, simultaneous or, or more so synchronized collective reality, then you have the truth. And that's the truth. And that's the only thing that's the truth. Because if it's ever just what a group of people believe or a system of indoctrination that people are taught, or a belief system that existed before those people and it's kept on just because it existed before them and they're told it, that's not the truth. Those are just lies that everyone believes in. Only when people break their mind down, break down what they believe, and then build it back up from scratch, from pure intent, 
and then everyone gets to that same spot in their own way, their own path, that's the truth. And then the story, the challenge is how to break the mind down, how to break everyone's mind down, or how to get them to, how to get them to examine themselves, how to get them to see what they're doing, see what they are, see how they've been lied to, see what's in their mind now because what's been planted there. Well, you have to rattle the cage, you have to stir things up. You have to get them to look in the areas of their mind that they don't want to look. You have to illuminate the dark, to use an occultic term there. Because it's real. All that terminology is real. You can make it, you can use enlightenment, you you become aware of the shadow mind, etc. It's only when you purposely create darkness is it wrong. Or that's in my opinion, for me. And it's, it's, you know, even then, it's not, it doesn't, uh, it's not the same, okay, it's just not the same. When you illuminate in order to find the difference between the light and the dark and therefore unify them as a similar or synchronized system, that's a form of the original enlightenment. If you illuminate by creating the dark and then shining the light on the dark and going, look, look what horror I've created. Look at what perversions I've done. That's the illusion. That's not the true path. That's not what it was really about. That's just what it is. It's not the same as purely simply illuminating what was there to begin with. There's a difference. But that's the idea. That's what everything's going through, everyone's going through. Seems like a big trip, big mind game. Guess what? It already is. The only way is to make it that much more of a mind game, to exaggerate it and fulfill it and interact with upon as many psychological layers of being to challenge, build up that tension, that pressure to safely and in a controlled manner stimulate the mind and rattle the cage and that's the, the only way to show what's actually there, to provide the truth, at least the first level of showing what's there. Then, to provide the truth, you gotta get that truth and paint it in ways that utilize filler information, which are, it's also called lies, and let people decide from there. If it's done any other way, people aren't gonna see it, they're not gonna get it. It's just called indoctrination. A bunch of people believe because a bunch of other people believe. Those are just called group lies. And that's what's ruling the world overtly. It's really covertly those who know the truth. But it's so shocking that there must be a way for people to come to that truth themselves because no one will believe it otherwise. All right. Thanks for listening. For whoever that did. It'll be more more planned and organized next time, I assure you that.